Hello all, we are doing a series in YouTube by the name called as World of Anthropology. On the same series, I am coming up with a topic called as Darwinian theory. Why it is in the news? You know that NCRT in the current NCRT book, they had omitted the Darwin's theory. So it is very much in the news. The intellectuals, the educated lot, the research scholars are criticizing the government for removal of Charles Darwin unit from the NCRT books. So on this note, it is a current affair. So hence I want to discuss about the Darwinian theory. The great personality, the Charles Darwin he is very famous for his book called as Origin of Species. And he is a person who did lot of excavations across the world, but mainly focused upon one particular island called as Galapagos Island, which is located on the west side of Usador in the Pacific Ocean. So here he found various species, their diversity. By seeing those diversity, he felt very interested and started studying about them, doing research on them and he has written the book called us, as I told you earlier, Origin of Species. So what is his theory? What he discussed about all, I will be discussing in this particular session. The Darwinian theories, the Darwinian theory. As I told you, he went to Galapagos Island and he did a very famous expedition which is called as Bigel Expedition in the Galapagos Island. Where it is located, Galapagos Island, where it is located, it is located in this particular part of the world. If you see the world, this is South America. Here there is a small country called as Usitar. On the west side of Usidar, you can see the Galapagos Island. And if you go to the world map, in the world map, you can see the Galapagos Island here. So here he did the research here. He studied about the species and he written the book called as the Origin of Species. So that particular expedition is called as Bigel Expedition. And while doing this Bigel Expedition, he had came up with a theory called as theory of organic evolution. What is this theory of organic evolution? And he coined a term called as natural selection. What is natural selection? And what are the postulates regarding the theory of organic evolution? I will be discussing in this particular session. So what he noticed? He noticed where here he noticed three things. Number one, number one, animals of the same species, animals of same species, for example, in this, in this continent, the animals of same species who are on the north and who are on the south, who are on the north and who are on the south, the same species, in spite of inhabiting in the same continent, they are having different morphological features. Morphological features means physical features. In spite of inhabiting in the same continent, but they are on the north and the south, but the species is same, but their morphological features are different. This had created lot of curiosity among the or among or this particular person called as Charles Darwin. Not only this, then he understood the species, the same species who are located on the other side of the continent, the same species who are located on the other side of continents, they were been different and they are also been same. I will tell you the same species who are located on the east side of South America and the west side of Africa, the same species, but they are different in morphological features. At the same time, different species who are located on the different side of geography, their physical features or morphological features are same. This had created curiosity in Charles Darwin and this had resulted him to give a theory called as theory of organic evolution. He gave a theory called as theory of organic evolution. And from this he came to a conclusion that why there is similarity or why there is differences in morphological features. He told some traits which are observed in the human species, the traits which are being brought up or some traits which got developed in the human species will be naturally selected. Will be naturally selected. Why? Because it will be helping in evolution. So that particular traits in the human being which got naturally selected or naturally evolved will be helping in the evolution, will be helping in the survival, will be helping in the sustainability. That particular process he named it as natural selection. So nature will be selecting those traits which will be helpful in the 
further process of evolution or further process of sur survival that particular concept is called as natural selection and he observed that the nature will be selecting few traits which will be helpful in the survival that only named it as natural selection. So, these are three observations which were been made by the Charles Darwin. So, he gave postulates, Charles Darwin gave four postulates and one of the postulate is universal occurrence of variations, variations will be there on the earth. Diversity will be there, there will be universal occurrence of variation like for example, man living in Africa and the man living in America and the man living in India, variations will be there with respect to physical features. So, everywhere there will be variations which he told universal occurrence of variation number 2, there will be excessive natural rates of multiplication. So, naturally the reproduction will happen, happen, happen. So, there will be excessive natural rates of occurrence. So, generally they will be increasing in the number. For example, oyster will give birth to 80 million eggs in one, in one particular life cycle. So, excessive rates of natural multiplication, excessive rates of multiplication, this is the second postulate which is given by Charles Darwin. And the third postulate which is given by him is struggle for existence. On the earth, compulsory there will be struggle for existence. I will struggle, you will struggle. In both of them who is going to survive, that person will evolve, struggle for existence. No person can evolve without struggle. Struggle is compulsory and the species also will struggle for food, species also struggle for mate, species also struggle for resource, species also struggle for space. So, in the species life, there will be struggle for existence for survival of the fittest. In this particular struggle, who will be winning the struggle means survival of the fittest. Who is fit? Only that particular species will be evolving that is called as survival of the fittest. So, four were being given. Number one, universal occurrence of variation. Number two, natural rates of multiplication. Number three, struggle for existence. Number four, survival of the fittest. These are the four postulates which are part of this particular thing. And the fifth thing which he told is, that variation which is evolved in me, the variation which has been brought into me because of natural selection, which is helping in my survival, inheritance of variation, that variation which I inherited or that variation which I brought for my survival, like for example, like for example, the hummingbird in order to take the nectar, it will be keeping it beak into the flower and it will be humming. Hence, it became the natural selection and the next generation also for the sake of flying on the air constantly so that it can suck the nectar, the bird got the same variety of wings. That is called as what is acquired will be inherited to the next generation by the term called as inheritance of variation. That variation will be inherited into the next generation. So, five postulates are being given by this particular great personality. Number one is universal occurrence of variation. Number two, there will be excessive rates of multiplication with respect to reproduction. Number three, struggle for existence. Number four, survival of the fittest. And number five is inheritance of variation. What variations I got that I will be inheriting into the next generation. These are the five postulates with respect to Charles Darwin. But however, there is a criticism on that survival of the fittest talks only about competition, but there are concepts or there are examples where there is cooperation also. For example, a parasite will depend upon the a, a species or a parasite will be living on another animal. For example, zooxanthellae will be developing on the corals. So, there is something called as cooperation also, but you are talking only about competition. Darwin gave pangenesis hypothesis which is also criticized. What is pangenesis hypothesis? a miniature of hand, a miniature of hand, a miniature of head, these all miniatures will come together and it will be giving rise to newborn baby. This is exactly got criticized. That is Darwin's pangenesis hypothesis got criticized. And according to you, there will be excessive natural rates of multiplication. There will be increase in the size. The size will be increased and the natural birth will be happening. If that is the case, then Irish deer and mammoth dinosaur, why they became extinct, there are no answers for the questions which are logically put against Darwin's theory. But however, the conclusion is 
The Charles theory of evolution has been criticized, but still it was adopted due to its logical reasoning. What is the logical reasoning means? The nature will be selecting those traits which are helping in survival. Hence, that particular concept is called as natural selection and which is true as well. Hence, because of this concept of natural selection, he was being called as father of organic evolution. His theories and postulates gave necessary impetus for further research and development. Hence, this type of theory or concept should be in the NCRT syllabus. Why? Because the young generation should know about the natural selection and evolutionary process. I hope the NCRT will revamp its book and again bring back the Charles Darwin theory into the NCRT books. Thank you. Do subscribe our channel. Jai Hind.